One complaint I hear a lot about Cakewalk is that the UI is exceptionally cluttered. And looking at the screen right now, I tend to agree. Thankfully, there is a feature in Cakewalk called Workspaces. Workspaces are essentially predefined setups of the UI that you can quickly switch between the four different tasks. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Workspaces and that may give you some tips about how you want to set up your own workspaces. So first of all, to access the workspace presets, you head to this on the top right hand corner, this drop down here. Here Cakewalk has a few suggested ones for us and above that, these are the ones that I've set up. Essentially, workspaces let you choose what modules are in the control bar and what menus are on screen at what point. So the control bar here, as we can see, we have the transport, the punch-in, the loop, the performance module hanging off the side of the screen, the markers, the snap, the tools. If you want to modify the control bar, all you have to do is right-click in a space. You can resize modules. You can close modules. You can choose what modules are on screen at any given time. You can lock the module order, you can center and justify the modules, and you can decide where the control bar goes. First of all, we have the assembly workspace. And right away, you'll be able to see that um, the control bar has been collapsed. And how you do that is by hitting shift and C. Even when the control bar is in full view, I have a few modules collapsed and I have the transport module um, decreased in size. I don't want anything on screen that I don't need. This assembly view is where I set up my projects. If I'm setting up a project from things that have already been recorded, I do it in here. For example, on the right here, I have the media tab defaulted to come up and this is set to my audio drive. So say I've got some tracks or stems or whatever that I want to bring in, all I have to do is find them and drag them in. Cakewalk will instantly set up some new tracks. I can then if I want, I have the tempo track up here so I can add in some tempo changes and I have the arranger track set up. can also colour tracks in here and add them to folders. The second workspace that I use is the edit workspace. It gets rid of the browser because I don't need it anymore. It keeps the control bar collapsed. However, it does add some edit specific modules. I've added the snap module and I've added the loop module. And the point of this workspace is to edit my tracks before I need to mix. So maybe trimming any silence, fading things, editing a drum kit, whatever. I like to do this in here. Um, I keep the control bar collapsed or minimized so the waveforms are as big as possible. But yeah, I do any editing in this workspace. Third workspace is record. And here I've brought the control bar back into view because I like to see um, what's going on with the metronome or solos, mutes, effects, things like that when I'm recording. Additionally, um, I have brought in the punch module for recording because that's something I use quite a lot. The only other difference here is I've brought the inspector back in to bring up the track properties. I can then put some info in the description here about that recording such as this um, and if during the recording uh, stage I want to go back and maybe trim something I could do it in here or it's easy enough to just flick back to edit and do it in here. After record um, I will show you the templating workspace that I use. 
So essentially this workspace is for adding track templates. This is a new laptop and I don't have my custom track templates on here at the moment. So when I drag these in, you will see the track colours change and the names. But you can set this up in a way to make sure this doesn't happen. For example, my drums are always coloured red. The kick drum is always called kick. The snare drum is always called snare. And more or less, they're always being routed to the same place. If I'm mixing an EP or an album, especially for the drums and the bass, I'll use track templates a lot because I want things to sound consistent. So for example, I've got the tracks up here with the inspector uh, on the left just to keep an eye on the levels and the browser is set to my track templates folder. I can have a, a folder pair band and I can just drag in track templates. I can just sort of get things going really quickly. After this, um, we of course have the mix view. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it just maximizes the console and I bring the control bar back in as well. Um, I like to see the control bar when I'm mixing because I want to keep an eye on what the CPU is doing. I'll potentially loop some sections and of course I've got the mix module up. But yeah, this is pretty, pretty easy. I just have the mix view as big as possible. After this, I have a, a VSTI view. And this brings in the synth rack on the right here. And in the media browser, I've got this set to go to the MIDI patterns folder. And this is a really, a really good view for just getting up and running with synths. So I'll just add some TTS1 instances into the synth rack here. I'll just rename these. And because I've already got the browser up, maybe I've got a chord pack or something that I want to use. I can just drag patterns in like this. So it's a lot faster again than navigating through the explorer, importing something, playing it, not liking it, doing the full thing again. If you have things set up like this, you can just drag and drop. After this, um, I have a piano roll view. This is pretty self-explanatory. Again, it just brings up the piano roll. And I have the tracks down the right-hand side here. I can colour the tracks here if I want to do that. But the best thing about this is, by holding control, I can bring all... Uh, the MIDI tracks in view and I can sort of do some multi-track MIDI editing in here all at once and if I decide that I want to um, go back and add another synth I just go back to this VSTI workspace add it here go back to the piano roll and uh, start doing things with that I just find it a lot quicker than the insert soft synth uh, kind of approach. One more window that I've got that I don't use so much is the arrangement workspace. This just brings up the arranger and the inspector here. It makes the arranger track a little bit bigger and the media browser defaults to like custom arrangements that you can drag in and try out. But yeah, hopefully um, you can see how quickly you can move through things. It's sort of like a video editing workflow but um, it really does help. The good thing about workspaces is that you can you can set up cakewalk whatever way you want to have it set up. You might like everything on screen at once, or you might like one thing on screen at once. It really doesn't matter. To save a workspace, all you need to do is get your modules the way you want them. Uh, I'm just going to make something up here. Once you're happy with how things look, um, you just hit this drop down and hit new workspace. You can then name this whatever you like. I'll just call this test workspace for video. 
hit OK. That will save it. And it will put it in the workspace drop down here. Workspaces can go a lot deeper. Um, if you hit manage workspaces, you can actually have uh, keyboard shortcuts and themes per workspace. You can add descriptions for workspaces in here. So, uh, like so, you can you can decide what's shown in the the GUI for any workspace. So yeah, they are quite a deep customization tool in Cakewalk. It's it's up to you how much you want to go with it. So yeah, this has been quite quite a long video. Uh, I've tried to keep it as concise as possible. But yeah, hopefully you can see how it can really speed up your workflow. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments. And thank you again for watching this video.